So, what we are going to play next is a deck I'm calling Eggs with Ketchup. It's a mono-red deck with a lot of artifacts, and it's built to abuse some of the artifact synergies in the set. Uh, a few of the key cards include Pia's Revolution, which is whenever a non-token artifact is put into your graveyard, you return it to the, to the hand unless the opponent pays three that's three damage happens. So we've got a bunch of artifacts and things that get sacrificed that our opponent wouldn't want us to get back. And then we have, so uh, Scrap Trawler also, whenever an artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return it to your hand, uh, a, an artifact with lesser cost. So uh, that those are kind of the foundations as they make it so that whenever these artifacts die, we just keep getting them back and costing the opponent more and more life. So let's get into it. Um, we've got Walking Ballista. This is actually one of the core cards of the deck. Um, I'll tutor for it pretty often with Inventor's Fair. What happens very often in this deck is we get very late game, and Walking Ballista can come out and just kind of burn everything and everybody and Planeswalkers and just be a pain. Bomat Courier is an interesting little card advantage engine that's mostly here because it costs one mana and it has some abilities. There will be situations where we discard it for a new hand, but it's not that often. Uh, Implement of Combustion, this card is an artifact synergy card, and you'll see, we'll end up drawing a lot of cards off this if things go well. The first ability just kind of makes it a little more awkward for the opponent to let Pia's Revolution bolt their face. Universal Solvent, um, universally solving things, but it isn't insane for this deck to get like eight lands on the battlefield and be able to recur this over and over a scrap trawler. I have destroyed like six lands in one game with a universal solvent because there wasn't much else going on. But it is a legitimate solution to tutelage, to planeswalkers, to things like that when the game gets long. Maybe not a turn three tutelage, but uh, if they're trying to catch up with you later in the game, it's hard for them to stop a reoccurring solvent. Uh, Renegade map, Mostly because it's a one-drop artifact, even though we're just one color, it does its job. One Ravenous Intruder, I don't like many of these. Uh, sacrificing a bunch of artifacts to them and getting blown out is pretty bad, but sometimes just having one around. Also, they're terrible, typically in multiples. And Fatal Push is a big deal in the format, which means you don't really want to have this guy very often. So I just have one, and he might even get cut. Uh, key to the City draws a bunch of cards because you can tap it to the cards coming up, gear per Aether Grid, for example, and making uh, the occasional thing unblockable, like a Bomat Courier as your card advantage engine, but it's not that big of a deal. Alchemist Vial, this card does a lot of work. You end up sacrificing getting it back, sacrificing getting it back. It holds things down, it holds the board down, it draws you cards. You'll see. It's great. Synergy card. Scrap Trawler, one of the combo-ish pieces that if you can get to just stay on the battlefield, you can do a bunch of nasty stuff with it. Filigree Familiar, keeps your life total high, draws you cards, chump blocks. It's just a bridge card. It gets you into the later game. Pia's Revolution, the combo card of the deck. When you don't draw it, the deck operates very differently, but as soon as you do, it starts going to town. Aether Grid, another combo-ish card that can take over the game against smaller creatures, of which there are many in the meta, so I have all three. I would go down to two or maybe even one if the meta became about like mill or control, but it also should be noted that this can check Planeswalkers very well. Incendiary Sabotage. Uh, top secret, don't tell anyone, but if you play this deck, it's actually a board control deck. It it feels closer to lantern control than to affinity. So you get a whole bunch of artifacts on the battlefield, you keep the opponent from killing you, and then your end game is actually very frustrating to deal with. Uh, gear per Aether Grid, um, Pia's Revolution, Universal Solvent, Recurring, uh, Scrap Trawler. It's so, but to get there, you can't get run over. So that is why we have Incendiary Sabotage, and there are plenty of artifacts to sacrifice. Also, nobody expects this card. Let me just say that. Like, the blowouts I've achieved with this card have been surreal. My favorite, and I, God, I wish I was recording this game. I was up against Vehicles, and he resolved um, Cultivator's Caravan, Smuggler's Copter, Smuggler's Copter, and Renegade Freighter. So he has all those on the battlefield. And he goes for a... What's the card? Um, he goes for... 
Start your engines. All right. He turns all those on. That's a swing for like six plus seven plus thirteen plus eight. That was a, sing a swing for twenty-one. He starts the engines for a swing for twenty-one, and I respond by targeting his um, cultivator's caravan twice with the aether grid and casting incendiary sabotage and wiping the board. Be just nobody expects this card. Freaking brilliant. It's freaking awesome. Uh, then on the top end, I have. Definitely there are enough cards in the set that we can do more synergy if we wanted to, but I'm opting for two cards that are just uh, powerful and give you a way to win the game on it on their own, and that's Chandra, Torch of Defiance, and uh, Chandra Flame Caller. Both can come down when the opponents aren't ready for them and just win the game, and that's why they're there. I just wanted some more win conditions and less synergy pieces, some cards that were individually powerful. And Mountains, 16, Inventor's Fairs 2, Foundry of the Consoles. I still haven't activated it yet, but it's a free roll with Renegade Maps and 16 Mountains in a deck with only a few red cards. So it's there. And uh, one Aether Hub. Um, why? Uh, I guess every now and then I might want, like, one energy. What would I want one energy for? Do I have anything? I know I had something before, but I might have taken it out of the deck. It looks like I did. Guess what, Aether Hub? You just made, you just got taken off the list. Um, we can run something else instead. And maybe it's a Battlements, because we can give our Ravenous Intruder haste and one-shot the opponent. Let's try it. That sounds brilliant. That sounds, that sounds like fun to me. So uh, that's the deck with a small update that I have to change right now or else I'll hear about it later in the comments or the something. So I'm writing it down. And we're Battlements. I think that's how it's said. It's not the garrison. The garrison's the creature. I don't even know if I'm spelling hand we're right. Oh, my life. My life is crazy. All right. There. Submitted that. Now we can go get a game. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Everybody ready for this? I don't think y'all know what's going to happen. This looks like a really cute deck. And then when you play against it, it's got to be the most annoying deck to play against in the history. I mean, it's it's going to get gross. I'm just telling you. I'm telling you now. If, if things go as planned, this is going to get gross. We're going to ask our opponent, you know, in a good game, we'll ask them like probably 20 times if they want me to return like some cheap artifact to my hand or take a lightning bolt to the face. <laughs> All right. Is the deck actually good? I don't know. But it's fun. And there's a lot of decisions, so maybe there's something here. You have a lot of options. Usually if you have a lot of options, there's something good underneath. Oh, man. Ugh. Now, see, this hand... Mm, it's not terrible, but I'm going to I'm gonna try to get something... Yeah, with a, l a few more of the pieces that I want. And this is one of the pieces I want. And this is something that kind of maintains me so that I don't have to worry about just getting run out of the barn. Although I love Ballista. I need the Ballista. You'll see Ballista later. He's going he's gonna to do some work. All right, there we go. And we'll lead on the Implement of Combustion. Yep, no Gear Hulk. I don't think that is necessary. It's an interesting card, but I don't think it's quite what I want uh, in the deck. The synergies really aren't there. It's mostly a big dumb animal that gives the opponent more choices. And when you're behind, it's... Mm, yeah, it's not that good. Your average casting cost is... My average casting cost is very low, so it would be absolutely foolish of them to not let me... Uh, to not take the mill. That is absolutely right. Is there no room for Cathartic Reunion? There's no point to Cathartic Reunion. You'll see. I, 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 I'm going to draw plenty of cards without a Cathartic Reunion getting involved. All right. Yay, land. We needed that. Hmm. And I think what I'll do next turn is deploy two more artifacts. Because then if we top deck a land, we can sabotage. And if we don't top deck a land, we can Aether Grid. And get the Aether Grid key to the city going. And he's got double Dauntless. So that's as aggressive a start as you get out of a blue-white uh, deck. 
Three power for two, not very common. There's a ballista. So we want double artifacts. Which artifacts do we want? I think the key, the ballista is really easy to interact with. So I'm going to go there. Love a land next turn. If we don't get it, the grid can start killing a Dauntless per turn. Of course, if uh, down comes the Angelic Destiny, you know, GG's. Yep, here comes the beats. We're going to 11, so we're under pressure. Under pressure. Boo -doo 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 -doo. And more creatures are here. That's not good. Do 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 do. Pressure. Oh, that's better. Pressing down on me. Pressing down on you, no matter for. I'm gonna just do it now. I know it has instant speed, but if my opponent has a counter spell, we're gonna respect that. It is blue white. There is spell uh, spell quellers and counter spells, and we don't want that. So we're gonna do it now. Get it out of the way. You don't always have to cast your instance at instant speed. And at, and considering my hand and the toys we have and the tools we have, I think it would be greedy to do so. Notice we sack Implement of Combustion. We get to draw a card when we do that. So we drew an extra card there, and it was Chandra Flame Caller, which if once we get up there in mana will be awesome. Yep, it's the Razor Foot Griffin. <laughs> That's a thing. <laughs> All right, so did we try to draw another land and then Grid would kill that thing? Or do we pay, play the Ballista? Since one of the only ways that this game gets out of hand is an Angelic Destiny, I'll just put the Ballista down. We can kill the Razorfoot in response to any auras with using the counters from the Ballista. Or um, we can sack it in response if the Ballista gets targeted for anything. And Razorfoot number two makes my incendiary sabotage or my grid look pretty good. We're still going to take some damage right here. And hopefully we don't take too much more and we can get an Inventor's Fair. As we're in a little bit of a danger zone. Blue-white can only do so much, especially with Razorfoot Griffins, but we do have to watch it. The deck normally, and I'm going to say normally, does take a lot of damage early. It is not weird to be trying to stabilize at like at a number like 6 life, something like that. And then you get an Inventor's Fair and you start ticking your way back up. So don't, if you hate decks that get behind early, this may not be a deck for you. And let's go this route. Another implement. We will shoot down this. And things look pretty wrapped up at this point as uh, our opponent's in a bit of a, a lock as far as creatures go. Just about any creature he plays can be uh, killed between Aether Grids and Sabotage. And we'll be able to draw two cards a turn thanks to the key. So the spot is good. We like the spot. He's got a Jwar Isle Avenger. That is a 3-3. Three, three. So I'm thinking we might sabotage this board. Hmm. Let's see. One, two, three. I'd have to draw one more artifact to grid it if I sacrifice the ballista here. So I will take the damage. And we'll see what we draw before making that decision. Blue-white, not going to burn me anytime soon. And let's see what happens next. Key to the Cité. Do I want to use you? That does take away the options for either drawing another uh, land, but or um, to top deck a land. It takes away the sabotage option. But I want cards, and I'm pretty sure I can make it work. I'm playing with fire a little bit, but I have faith. I have a lot of faith. All right. 
So we can play this. We can shoot down the Dwar Isle. We can vile the other thing if we want to. So that's what we'll do. Uno. Oh, can't vial it. Because we have to tap the vial to do it. Oh, wait. Yeah, well, I already tapped it. Whatevs. Another line would have been to uh, remove a counter from the ballista instead. Uh, we didn't hit our land drop yet. Maybe I should sack this and try to. But that just takes an artifact off the board, and right now the grids are doing so well, I don't think I need to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> is this the Oath of the Gatewatch AI? It's definitely a starter deck. So when they fixed Xbox matchmaking, it seems very clear that what they actually did was fix the connection issues, but not the matchmaking itself, as we are still playing against decks like this. Oh, and never attacks, untap another. It's a vehicle. Okay, that's fine. Uh, this deck does reasonably well against vehicles. Alchemist Vile and, uh, is reasonably effective against vehicles because they put energy in accruing it and then you nuke it. Or uh, Incendiary Sabotage, surprisingly effective. Okay, he's crewing that. Good job. Is this the AI? Did he leave? Did our opponent leave? Might have. If so, you're going to see the downside of this deck. It takes a long time to win. <laughs> it's very... Um, very repetitive. It's a lot of triggers. It's a lot of work. <laughs> this is the AI. Oh yeah, because we don't have a timer. Oh, there's the Inventor's Fair. It's a clutch card in the deck. Alright. <laughs> I forget. I honestly forget if they've left or not. I just... It, it completely escapes my mind. <laughs> the pointless vehicle crewing does give it away, though, doesn't it? You, you. Now we can take out the Griffin... Got more than enough artifacts. We'll leave up a vial and one mana to stop the crew if our opponent uh, plays a creature and tries to crew. And now we can start attacking. <laughs> Hopefully we can keep our opponent's board reasonably clear and thus avoid pointless crewing of vehicles. <laughs> As that will make this game take even more insanely long. Yes, flashbacks to gold grinding. Absolutely. There is that. Oh, crew that vehicle. Let me see that again. I think it's when it attacks or blocks, not when it crews. Unta when it attacks. Okay. Perfect. And here comes the crew. Wait for it. There it is. All right. I'm just, I'm just going to tell you no. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's just pop an egg and say no. Okay, we get to untap the key, so we get to draw a card. We also could play Chandra this turn. I don't see the point, though. We're very ahead on board. We don't need her. Might as well just stack cards to the rafters. You might say I'm dirtling, but I don't know. I, I don't I don't really buy into making uh, plays I don't need to with big, powerful, swingy cards like Chandra. I like having an ace in the hole whenever I can. There are times when that's not worth it, when you shouldn't do it. Arguably, you could say it's when you're against an AI-inspired Razorfoot Griffin deck, as the ability of them to dramatically swing the game with something even close to Chandra's power level is pretty low. But that won't stop me from being me. <laughs> Should have killed... I guess we should have killed this before it had an opportunity to crew anything. Here comes the crew. Getting a little lazy with all my cards. All my awesome cards on the battlefield. Let's uh, shoot that. <laughs> See, it's a 3-4. I could block it, draw a card, and then can I deal two more to it? I can. So, if we can get the vehicle off the field, that's great. 
the AI won't get to crew it no more. <laughs> Speed the game up a little. You can see that it looks like we're going to have no problem activating Universal Solvent later if we want to. So, here's the block. I definitely don't mind getting another card. And now we can always remember when you're doing math of how to kill things with this deck to remember if you have a Ballista with multiple counter with counters on it. Because your uh, Ballista can chip in with your Aether Grid, with your Incendiary Sabotage, and kill most things. Like, it's pretty easy to pile up a lot of damage. And now I'm going to just... Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw Chandra at my opponent. We have the mana open for a Vile activation if we need it to stop some hasty threat that probably doesn't exist. Of course, if he had countered my Chandra there, I'd be laughing. <laughs> but let's see if we can uh, go ahead and finish this one up. Uh, no love for journal in this deck? You really don't need it. I, I hope to be able to show you that the deck absolutely has no problem drawing a ton of cards. Like, a ton of cards off the eggs that it has. Like, I tried a bunch of things like that, and I, my hand was just always so flooded that I continuously worked to make the all the combo and synergy elements cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, and I believe I did that. And... I, I still like you can see I'm still I'm still flooded with options over here. Every every turn has a lot going on. You don't always need more cards. You just need enough to have good options as often as possible. Now that said, you could throw a journal. You could absolutely throw a journal in there if you wanted to, but I'm I doubt it's necessary. You can have fun with it. I mean. Maybe it's a good replacement for the Ravenous Intruder, since I never really get to go off with him. So, if you want to put a journal in, go for it. There aren't many expensive cards. It can definitely afford it. It's a little bit slow, and it requires a grid to be successful, but if it isn't, you're just drawing more cards. Maybe you need more cards, maybe you don't. The ability to tutor up uh, revolutions is probably not a bad thing or inventor's fairs if you need those to gain life. Most common uh, problems. The ability to go get Chandra probably makes it better. You're sort of talking me into a journal. I could see it. It would just feel so bad if I were struggling to get uh, artifacts onto the board and I was looking at a journal in my hand. I think we can try. All right, that's good. You really do want to fill your turns with like deploying as many of your uh, artifacts as possible most of the time. So, journal is a big clunker. He kind of makes that hard. He's a big clunking journal. Who knew a journal could be so heavy, right? Five mana? Five mana? That's the same cost as like uh, an Arborback Stomper, which is supposedly a big old giant dinosaur looking thing, right? It's a heavy journal. That journal's intense. That Tamiyo is a real uh, bookworm, huh? When I think of journals, I think of like two mana, max. <laughs> of course, the card would be so freaking broken at two mana. Can you imagine that? Tamiyo's journal at two mana. Now, that's a card I'd love to play with. Um, We have to think sweepers, Bomac couriers in duos can do that, but at the same time, pressuring life total is fantastic. Like, really fantastic. At the same time, mana efficiency is important, because like I said, dumping as much out of our hand as quickly as possible is a thing. I really don't want my Bomats twin bolted. I think I'll do an Alchemist Vial. I think that's where we want to be. We don't really have any combo elements yet, so we need to get closer to them. And here comes the vial. Let's see what we get. The Elvish Visionary of the Red Duck. There we go. Yes. But I'm going to mess with your... It looks like a Gear Hulk or some kind of a Colossus. Some kind of a construct. It's like, hey, 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 hey. Although dealing three damage to 
each creature. That wouldn't take down a giant monster. I wonder what's up with that. What's up with the flavor on you? I don't know. Um, okay. Well, I know it's the AI and it takes forever, but I'm going to play it out because I feel really stupid that I got this game and lost it that quick. Uh, opponent is playing... Well, we've got an Aether Revolt card, so love to see new cards. Love to see our opponents play new cards. Aether Swooper. 1-2, Videlkin Artificer. Flying, 2 energy. Whenever it attacks, pay 2 energy. Make a 1-1 one, one servo. Okay. No big emergency there. If he makes servos, I can definitely sweep them up. I'm guessing this is a teamer energy deck, so... I think I just want to deploy my primary strategy and dig for that combo piece or play the familiar? Um, I'll dig for that combo piece and then maybe I give him another turn. If he plays more creatures, I might just sabotage him. Okay, another sabotage. Probably not a bad thing, but not a great thing right now. Four artifacts on the field if we find a grid so it can go right to work. Let's see what the AI wants to do with their swooper, if they activate that ability or not. Aether Sphere Harvester. That's a big game. That is an annoying card for this deck. A very annoying card for this deck. We don't have a ton of ways to deal with it. A lot of decks don't. So, yeah. Gonna be, and it's a vehicle, so the AI is going to use it poorly. <laughs> and we'll have to figure out a way to gang up on that card. Uh, obviously, when I say I don't have a ton of ways, I'm not counting Universal Solvent. <laughs> but that is in the deck, and that is a way. So we'll have to stay focused on our land drops and get up there. Oh yeah, we're, we're dubs. We're doubles for sure. Lots of doubles in this hand. Making the doubles happen. I hit my land drop this turn, so I'll launch another Implement of Combustion. And next turn, we might start getting lifelinked. How are we doing on cards here? Three. I'll have to keep an eye on that, too. If we get a, a bunch under there, we may not want these Sabotage. Ooh. Uh, yep, that's a big boy. Hexproof's annoying. It's going to be one of those chump blocking things. Sabotage won't work if he pumps it here. If he take if the AI takes this moment to pump it. Sabotage is unlikely to work anyway. We'd have to get it in response to the right circumstance. Harvester coming in. This one looks like it's gonna be a tricky one to deal with. Our opponent, I don't know about this one two flyer, but I know this harvester and this hydra are uh, big cards to deal with in the format. Big cards. Requiring all the right answers. All the right answers in all the right places. Oh yeah, we're going down. So if it takes one and I... Uh, he'd have to pump it. Nope, that wouldn't work out. I think we just keep deploying. Get everything we can get onto the table here. Keep hitting land drops, that's going to be huge. <laughs> Do we deploy another Bomac Courier? I guess so. I mean, it's not doing anything in the hand. And right now, I will probably toss the Sabotages to get more cards. So this gives me, like, a chump block option if I want it. Now, do I send the Bowmat and just get a new hand now, if that's what I want? Hmm. It's really stupid to try to race the Harvester. But getting hands under the Couriers might be good play, so that's what we'll do. And let's see... Okay. Good, good job, opponent. Good job. 
<laughs> Thank you, AI. I don't know if I'd how how uh, I'd do in this game without your help. Um, do we discard this hand now then, or do we try to get another one? How greedy do we get? We hit our land drop, so there's not much we can play this turn. How greedy do we get? I'll just take it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it should have been the map, but I guess it doesn't matter. I'm not going to need it next turn, but just because it comes in untapped. I kind of meant the map, and I missed. I aimed. I hit the solvent instead. So, solvent is probably the solution to... Yeah! Okay. Chandra's here. Goodness gracious, we need an Aether Grid. We need an Aether Grid or a Pia's Revolution pretty bad. Or our own Chandra. And he's exiling. I take two. Okay. I'm sure we'll crew up that Harvester. I'm definitely looking for a chump block with my familiar. I want to draw the card. I've got to draw into the right cards to compete with this board, as we are very behind and have work to do. But it's not insurmountable. It looks bad. But it's not that bad. Keep in mind, we got double universal solvent. So Chandra's not ultimating on us. But it does take time to, of course, spend seven mana to kill a planeswalker. Somebody thinks that my deck is getting wrecked. I think we've got a long way to go. The deck has a good amount of play. I think we'll be alright. There's, there's one reason. That is an exciting card. Now, hopefully our opponent doesn't just blow it up and make my life very sad. All right, do we need a chump block? Yeah, we'll just take a chump block. A chump block and an alchemist vial is what we're going to do. Now, if our opponent removes the chump blocker, yeah, so be it. Chandra going up. Casting Imperial Voyager. Fun. One thing with this deck, <laughs> you might want to get used to just feeling reasonably confident with a board full of junk like this hanging around. <laughs> That Dynavolt Tower will probably also be an issue. But he's got a lot of ways to spend energy and only a few to make them, so... Maybe if I keep that Voyager from attacking, he'll just have trouble. Okay. Well, if you don't... Okay, now he activates. Okay, now I will... Let's go. So he's got... Like, if he pays three life, we can redirect it. Um, and he does not, so... Even at 21, he can't really take the damn. He can't really uh, pay the life, or we just redirect it to Chandra. So we get the vial back. Now we just have to make sure that we keep hitting land drops, and we can hold off his board reasonably well. What? Oh my God! Well, the um, in, in the integrity of this game, just died. Uh, our opponent, in their wisdom decided that letting the uh, the AI, it should be said, is controlling this. The AI decided that rather than let me get back a Beaumont Courier, they would Dynavolt Tower and target their own Bristling Hydra. So, no matter what I do from this point, you guys, this game is jacked. It's over. <laughs> but we can uh, torture the AI with uh, decisions. <laughs> so here we go. We're gonna sacrifice that map. We're gonna get back the map because we can go get land. Comes back to our hand because of the Pia's revolution. And let's just let's just get comboing off here, shall we? Okay. Um, I could use the solvent right here, but I don't have to. I can do this. <laughs> We can kind of vile lock them a little bit from attacking us. 
<sighs> what was left of this game's integrity just died. It's sad. It's just sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the faces in chat. I love the little, uh, I love all the faces everyone's making. It's killing me. It's absolutely killing me. You guys are the best. Um, all right. <clears throat> let's get some, tw let's get some, uh, vials onto the battlefield. <laughs> There's Chandra. That's our girl. Um, we want to be able to sack these again. So do I play anything else? I don't think I need to play anything else. I think setting off two vials, that'll keep the harvester back and the energy girl back. So, yeah, we'll hold up. One card I tried a lot to make work in the deck was um, Foundry Inspector, the one that makes your artifacts cost less, because in situations like this, it just becomes like this endless loop if you can cast your stuff super cheap. But it just turned out to be a lightning rod. There aren't that many creatures in the deck, and shock, it, it just died. It just died over and over again. It was very sad. Alright, so here comes the activation. What are you gonna do? You're, gonna, you, you're not thinking about attacking me, are you? Well... <laughs> what? No. <laughs> and the eggs come back. Well, this is a fun this is a great deck against the AI. They're just never gonna pay life. And if they never pay life, they never really shut down your cycle. <laughs> Alright. It would be really nice though to have a grid. That is the big missing piece, so let's try to get to one. Okay, that's another map. It's not important. Um, we can drop the land. Let's drop another grid. We could sh if Chandra killed his Chandra. Again, still not in a... There, there, there. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Did it. <laughs> One, two, three. F One activation, two activation, three activation, four. Uh, five if I play this solvent, but I do not really want to. Let's just uh, start... Let's get that Voyager off the battlefield. Oh wait, I do have to play it, or else I can't do four activations. Yeah, that's right. Because, like, I can't activate the vial anyway. I'd have had to tap it to do all the activations I wanted to do. So, you die. You are gonna die. Yep, you go ahead. You activate that. <laughs> Won't save you. At least, hey, now I don't have a timer for all these activations, which is always one of the stress points of playing the deck. Bam, bam. <laughs> ba bam, ba bam, ba bam. Pew, 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 pew. No! <laughs> I guess I got told. <laughs> oh, poop. Walking Ballista, I need you. <laughs> I guess I got told. Opponent slow roll in the high spire infusion. Not really what I expected. And can't attack. All right. If you if you, if they can uh, wreck me this turn, they're in fine shape. You got one turn, opponent. Ah, good old high spired. Yep, you hit a sage. I'm thinking next turn we'll Chandra their board. If they activate the Harvester, we'll kill that. We'll start picking at their Chandra. Although their Chandra, if I wipe their board, they could wipe my Chandra out. <laughs> yeah, Shatterstorm. Not in the set, but there is an old card that would work. It's destroy all artifacts. They can't be regenerated, but there is no Shatterstorm here. Boop, boom, bow. You have to be really patient. This deck is fun, but I, this is why it reminds me of Lantern Control in Modern for you paper players. You gotta be really freaking patient. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's a lot of, uh, you, you run through your controller batteries. <laughs> All right, give me a life. There's my intruder. I don't have the battlements for the big combo finish. Um. Think it through. One, two, three, four, five. So I can do this. 
Mor yeah, Mortivor loves decks like this. Yes. <laughs> oh, Shatterstorm would be uh, great. I could cast Shatterstorm, and it would be kind of an interesting way to recycle all my effects. <laughs> uh. All right. Anyone here ever got murdered by a 2828 electrostatic pummeler on turn four? I've done that murdering. It's a good time. Okay. So, what do you think our opponent's hand is? Probably another high spire or something. Let's uh, go after Chandra. Let's start there. Let's see where that takes us. Can we kill Chandra? Consulate uh, lockdown? Consulate crackdown? So, hey, that's pretty smart. It found it. Even though you put lockdown instead of crackdown, that's cool. Alright, that's dead. I could put out the intruder. Or I could... Let's see. I think I'll just play another implement and hold up some uh, eggs to sack, some alchemist vials. But I mean, this is just such a... this is the lock, right? I mean, what are they going to do? We can universal solvent just about anything. We can kill just about anything. We can prevent just about anything from attacking. Chandra, he's got his own Chandra. That's, that's annoying, but that's not going to wreck us. We can ping the tokens if we want. And we can universal solve and Chandra herself if we want. Alright. So what's he gonna do? Let's see. If we sack two vials, then we still have two three pings, so we can kill the three ones. So we can stop everything from attacking, but I don't think we need to. I definitely want to stop energy beastie from attacking. Uh-huh. And now I can stop the Harvester from attacking, so that's fine. Mm. Yeah, losing to God Draws definitely uh, happens. Responded to chat talking about Electrostatic Pummeler. You will lose to God Draws. I've lost two... A ridiculous amount of them. I've lost to them in horrible situations. The, the, like there are some that always stick with me. Like there was one playing for a, a major tournament top eight that I was excited to be a part of, and I was really close to getting there. And my opponent, God, drew me so mercilessly in the last game. Just absolutely broke my heart. Like broke my spirits and broke my heart. And I'm not ashamed to say it. Okay, so he makes a token. We'll kill that. <laughs> Alright. I was on a mulligan to six. It was bad as it was, but to get God drawed on top of it, it was like, well, I guess I will not top eight this event. <laughs> okay, key to the city. <laughs> as if we need more action. What to do? We can make that thing not block, or we can kill it. We can take out Chandra. We can universally solve something. Maybe that's the right play in this spot? We've got the land. One, two, yeah. I guess that w is a way to do it. But so is, let's see. So I can play you it's gonna do better than the key for now okay that's not that that's not that important mm. one two three four five six seven so we can hold it up that's good all right so I want to shoot that thing down hopefully not get high spire infusioned again. I do, I'll probably just tilt. <laughs> Alright, 
He does that. And we'll get that off the battlefield. Yeah, it's true. Flying... <laughs> oh, you're talking about Suntail Hawks. Well, I was going to say, the flying can mess you up with this deck, too. That's not crazy talk. Get rid of our other fair. Uh, stop you from attacking. <laughs> trigger, 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 trigger. This deck is really cool. I do apologize if it puts you to sleep. Oh, God, I did not mean to go to attacks there. Puts me to sleep, I guess. I should stop worrying. And start wor and start actually playing. Because <laughs> now he gets to keep Chandra around. Does that cost me? Is that going to cost me? Um. Well, we got one vial. Now we got two life. Is that going to kill me? That was a pretty big mistake to make in the spot. Well, I guess we'll wipe... Yeah, this is stupid. I've done everything so wrong. But I'm going to do it this way so I don't die to his Chandra. Ugh. Okay, so I screwed that turn up really bad. <laughs> don't 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 be like me when you grow up, kids. Although maybe playing the familiar first is good, because now I get it back and perhaps I can uh, gain life with it. Hmm. So many options. Don't be like me. <laughs> Don't be like me. Deck requires stamina. It is so sad he is on Xbox. On Steam we get so much more competition. Yeah, I know. It's just so sad. <laughs> Cry me a river. <laughs> Perilous Mirror would be so broke right now. <laughs> I do miss my Perilous Mirror. Let's uh, get that... Save some life. I wouldn't be allowed to screw up as much on Steam. I'm sure of that. <sighs> yeah, you might even see Solve and take out Chandra here, since I totally botched last turn. Did I tune in just in time for the janky grid deck? I don't know if you want to call it janky. I can play it absolutely horribly and still get my opponent... Like, like I don't know. My opponent's got Chandra on the table. My opponent... Okay. You guys are tough... You guys are bad mouth in the competition. And really, the r only thing that went wrong with this game is they, they left on turn two. They got disconnected. So I had to finish against the AI. Because look, they've got a deck. This is a teamer energy deck. I'm up against a planeswalker. This isn't a Suntail Hawk. But yeah, it's time. Bye bye, Chandra. And guess what happens? Solvent comes back. Boom! Gotta love it. Okay, so how many activations do I have? One, two, three. That can take out the Virtuoso. And then I can play. You and you, and take out the Thopter, so I guess we'll just do that. <laughs> and kill that, if he doesn't have High Spire Infusion. Away with you. Bomat to the battlefield. Vile to the battlefield. Paging the vial. And... One for the road. Away with you. <clears throat> I guess we have the map so we can discard the land? <laughs> it's 
getting a little ridiculous. <laughs> but this is what you call gridlock. <laughs> Has anybody else messed around with Pia's Revolution? Gear per Aether Grid? Anybody else uh, playing that deck to any success? Just curious. It seems much better than the janky 8 clue creature deck I was brewing earlier. <laughs> Aha! We won up to the 8 clue. You outdrew him by 18 cards, kill him already. Oh, this deck. I'm telling you, it's lantern control. It doesn't. It doesn't worry. Oh, never mind. So. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. Oh, I tapped the battle. Why? Why did they tap the battlements? I was gonna give it haste. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I am absolutely an idiot. All right, <laughs> screw it. Uh, this is the AI. AI replaced on turn two, sadly, and pretty much choked the game away. <laughs> Derp. Mm. <laughs> oh man, I'm the dirt worst. I'm, I'm just the worst. <laughs> What can I say? What more can I say? I think I'll just start solventing his lands. You guys want to see that? <laughs> now that now that people are like, hurry up and kill him, I think I'll just uh, take the anti-high road and start blowing up his lands recursively. <laughs> oh my. He just, he just won't quit. And he can't stop. Cause they won't stop. We run rules, rules don't run. We won't take nothing from nobody. <laughs> what do you think? We doing okay? <laughs> grind. The grind is so real. Bye bye, Chandra. Thanks for coming. I I want that last card out of his hand though before I intrude or spike him. It's just it's too dangerous. It's probably a fog. It's gotta be right. <laughs> what else would be in the hand? What else would the AI refuse to play? Actually, I've seen the AI refuse to play all kinds of things. <gasps> Suntail hawk or um not Suntail hawks um was uh, Squadron hawks. That was the big one from 2015 when they just wouldn't cast a Squadron hawk. Oh yeah, now we can just blow up nothing. So, doo -doo, let's just get it down. Uh, if you want the decklist app, um, um, app, if you want the decklist, it should just be down there. All right, it should be below. You should be able to see it on the screen. So, try it out. <laughs> All right, let's start sacking our one drops. <laughs> By the way, we haven't even sacked an implement of combustion, but those draw you a card when you sacrifice them. How cool is that, right? <laughs> Bring it all back, baby. Bring it all back. <laughs> I guess I should be tapping them first before I do that. Max damage, right? I gotta do it right. Away we go, away we go, away we go. Yeah, this is the featured deck of the moment right here. Going off, hopefully for the last time, but of course we will get fogged. I don't pretend we won't. We all know, we all know. <laughs> How many triggers can we stack? <laughs> One card, what could it be, right? What could it be? Well, I'm leaving up a vial in case it's a, a flash blocker. <laughs> I will not deck myself. I have plenty. 15 is fine. Most of us would be would love drawing, like if we drew 15 cards in turn, we'd think that's great until there's 15 in the library and we get scared. 
Uh, maybe you have your video cropped wrong? I don't know what to tell you, dude. He's got one card in his hand. Here it comes. Ki. Dun 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 dun. Ah, yes, Atog win. Okay, uh, we've played this deck for something like 50 minutes. <laughs> Pretty nutty. Uh, I still think I, I can do one more. I really want to show you a real, um, a real game against somebody who's not the AI. <laughs> it deck should be called the Rage Quitter. I yeah, I haven't had anybody stick it out against this deck at all. That is the truth. That is the absolute truth. All right, here we go. He's got, our our opponent is sleeved up. That's something. We've got just the kind of draw that. We're going to need to find the combo piece, but we've got a lot of the pieces we like. A lot of things going right. Okay, I think I'll just chump Blocky with Bomat here as he's getting greeny. Be happy to be happy to get chumpy. Or eat a pump spell. Either one. Well, <laughs> this is this deck is oddly decent against werewolves just because we have very we very rarely have trouble playing multiple spells a turn. We can like flip his wolf against him pretty pretty consistently. Let's get them eggs. By the way, anybody want to run this in a tournament? Let me know how it does. <laughs> oh my goodness, would that be something? I hope I hope someone out there starts considering it. <laughs> so our opponent has the perfect one, two, three wolf curve. Isn't that something? <laughs> I would love an incendiary sabotage. That is what the deck needs in this moment. Uh, it certainly does keep the opponent guessing. I think. Yeah, blocks, blocks, blocks. <laughs> Once it does start happening, you're kind of like, oh boy, what the heck, is this actually good? And now I'm like, yeah, I think it's it's good enough. Like, you gotta respect it. That's what I'm telling you, you gotta respect it. But this, we're gonna have a bad game if we don't draw a Sabotage, or Chandra, or Grid. If we draw all eggs and no filler. Because our opponent's just playing creatures. Nothing but creatures. All the creatures. More creatures, please. We just want to run creatures. I'll just take that damage, since I'm probably holding his other guys back. He doesn't have a pump spell yet, or else he wouldn't be shy. And the draw is that. Ick. Okay. Uh, so let's go with that. That. And let's get on the board. Mm -hmm. The implements are going to draw us cards most likely next turn, so I'll just get there. Which two cards are missing in the deck list? I don't know. Figure it out. <laughs> if I knew, I wouldn't have missed them. <laughs> okay, he wants to bring the Duskwatch to the party. And the logger. Now he's getting a little aggro. So, no? Interesting. So maybe he's just doing this as a value play? I'm definitely blocking. I would say that 
that's a much higher value block. I would attack with that logger if I'm going to attack with a recruiter. And he didn't sacrifice it. Or he didn't use it. I'm sorry. He didn't use the ability. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't get you wrong, Smarty. It's all good. I hear you. I know what you mean. I know you'd love to watch me take on the elite esteem people. <laughs> He's got 3-4 wolf. That just flips, I believe, into something big and freaky. So do I cast the solvent, or do I leave up the vial? Yeah, there are four implements of combustion. Did I write two or something like that? Yeah, yeah, it's four. It's four. It's four instead of two. Good job. Yep, nailed it. Um. So the question here is, do I want to leave mana up to draw a card or use a vial, or do I want to get a solvent on the table? And I think it's draw cards. I need to improve my situation. Let's see what our opponent does. Sends the 3-4. Okay. I'm not going to block that. Pump it up, dude. Hit me with all the primal bellows. No? Not yet. <laughs> Okay, let's get a card. So his uh, werewolves are about to flip, and that is just a touch late. Um, so if his werewolves are going to flip, I need to double spell. That's no problem, I can double spell. Uh, so do I need to kill anything? No, I don't need to kill anything right this second. <laughs> I'm sure I'd do it. I'm sure if I were on Steam, I'd do just fine. I'm. I've been playing a long time. I probably won't play against anybody who is dramatically, and by that I mean like a lot better than people I've played against in the past. This is a little awkward, but I think I Chandra and plus for mana. Now that might put me in a rough spot, as the opponent might decide to attack me. So let's go up, and we'll play the solvent, and this will flip his wolves back, which is one of the big reasons to do these plays. Mm, your your hand really isn't empty enough to use Ori. I promise. Uh, it, did you see the last game above and beyond? Did you have you seen the games? Like you usually have like seven or eight cards in your hand. Uh, this is a pretty rare occurrence because I haven't drawn a revolution yet. And we haven't gotten key going. So we don't have a, an ori, or a non-ori, a grid to work with the key yet. But usually you fill up the hand with this deck, I promise. Mm-hmm. So I will block over here. And I will target over here. And if he's not going to do anything else, I'll fire off on him. <laughs> and let's uh, get some more cards. But I think you're, what you're going to... Ooh! Hello. Okay. We're fine. <laughs> now, uh, trigger's on. I could do this now. Now, the other thing I was going to do is plus Chandra and use Universal Solvent to kill something. I'm going to sabotage in response, sacking he to the city. So that dies. He's got his 5-3, but I can put out this card and get in his way.
Now flip his wolf back. And he's got a partisan. Okay. Okay. And another hermit. He's just all creatures. Our, our opponent is all dorks. You want to attack me? He does. Guess he didn't read the card. Um. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I'll just sack the solvents. The vial is potentially a lot more useful right now. I would have preferred to have Scrap Trawler out when I did that, but it's not worth waiting for the window. Chandra would die in the meantime if I were waiting. And we don't want that card getting out of hand and making a bunch of dudes, because we're not guaranteed to draw another Sabotage anytime soon. And now we can play another Vile. Draw another Vial. Uh, play a Scrap Trawler. Now we can sacrifice vials, getting back solvents, and doing cool stuff like that. We can then sacrifice solvents, getting back ballistas, or combustions, whatever we want, really. So this is another way that the deck can go into combo land, without grid, without revolution. Scrap Troll is a bit of a combo on his own. Getting him to live is hard, but if my opponent's only going to play green werewolves and no spells, that will be no problem. Go ahead, attack me. See what happens. It worked out well for you last time. Ah, oh, come on. Ah, hello. <laughs> now we're now we're cooking with some gas, and we have an opponent. So, this is really fun against a human because they get all the choices. <laughs> the choices are so real. Let's see what we can do. Oof. All right. How much damage can we do? If I sack this... Huh. Well, let's see. So we can sack Vile to Alchemist. We can get back a one drop. We can sack that to it. We can get back an XX drop. I guess I want to leave a vial open, though. I mean, if I attack, I want to leave a vial open. So, we'll, we'll send. We'll ship. Like, what are you going to do? Take it. Okay. Let's get back an implement of combustion. Let's target you. Do I get my vial back? He, the damage is taken. <laughs> How about now? <laughs> How about now? <laughs> Still want to take three more damage? No. <laughs> How about no? That, that sounds painful. I don't like that. All right. Five, six it is. And there's the concession. So, um... I'm not going to play anymore with the AI, but hopefully you see where all that's going. Ah. So, like I said, rage quit. That you just don't people don't hang around. The choices are too many. It's too frustrating to battle against. It's just a lot of work. So, please somebody play it in tournament so I can watch those games. And I hope you play against somebody like me who uses a mic and does commentary cuz that would be awesome. <laughs> All right, I hope you enjoyed my um, eggs, uh, my mono red eggs or eggs with ketchup as I also call it. I hope you uh, try it out for yourself. It's a little nutty and yeah, that was a long video. I'm going to, um, best deck I've seen in my life is a comment, great. Uh, so I'm gonna cut the, I'm gonna cut the stream but I'm going to come back um, for anybody waiting, so. Um, but thank you very much for watching this one and I'll see you again in a few.